Alright, welcome back to another video. This is section 3.2, how to solve linear equations by graphing. So, uh, we'll go through this whole section and then I'll show you at the very end why this is not yet the best way to solve linear equations, but it is an option, so here we go. First vocab word, linear function. In the previous section we learned a linear equation is anything that when you graph it you get a straight line, and so a linear function is the same thing except instead of an equation it's a function. So it's any function whose graph is a straight line linear function. We'll be dealing tons and tons with linear equations and linear functions this year in Algebra 1. Next vocab word is a root. So a root is the solution to an equation, aka values for the variable which make the equation true. So for example, if you have 2x equals 8, okay, then the root is x equals 4. Because if you solve this equation, it's the value for x which makes the equation true. So the root of the equation is x equals 4. Okay, the zero of an equation, or the zero, is the value of x which solves an equation of the form f of x equals zero. Okay, so a root and a zero are extremely, extremely similar. But instead of having 2x equals 8, I could minus 8 on both sides, and I might have something like 2x minus 8 equals zero. Notice that this equation and this equation are equivalent expressions, even though they're written differently. So this one is now in the form of some function of x, that would be 2x minus 8 equals 0. So now the solution here, x equals 4, same answer, but now it's called a 0 because it makes this expression equal to 0. So the zeros are the values of x, or the values of your variable, which make an expression equal to zero. Notice that this expression is on the left hand side and the right hand side is a zero. So the zero of an expression or the zero of a function is the value that you plug in that makes it zero, whereas the root of an equation is the value you plug in that makes the equation true, which has two sides to it that are equal. Alright, next up, x-intercept. This is where your graph, when you actually draw the picture, right, it's where the graph crosses the x-axis we're going to see how this is connected to roots and zeros momentarily. So the x-intercept, just a reminder of the one that you already knew, it's where the graph crosses the x-axis. Alright, so here we go. The word solution, the word root, the word zero, and the word x-intercept are all going to wind up being pretty much the same. Um, and you'll see when we do an example why that is the case. So if the question says find the solutions, or find the roots, or find the zeros, or find the x-intercepts, the task that you're actually doing is the same. Here we go, problem solving tips. How do you do this? So, to solve by graphing, the first thing you want to do is to get your equation in this form, f of x equals zero. So what that means is move everything that you have over to the left hand side, and then you're going to graph it. And so if you graph this, and you want to see, okay, the answers for when this equals zero are whenever my graph goes through zero. And those are your x-intercepts. So wherever your graph crosses the x-axis, aka x-intercepts, yeah, because that's what they're called, the x-intercepts, and they're also called the zeros because you have a function equaling zero. Okay, so your x-intercepts or your zeros of this function f of x are the solutions to this equation. So the thing I want to point out when we do our example is it's almost always easier to actually just solve algebraically than to draw a graph and look at it and see where it crosses the x-axis. Um, note, in order to make this method better, you would need a quick and easy way to draw the graph. But if you remember in the previous section, the way in which we drew the graph was by first calculating the x-intercepts. So it doesn't make sense to calculate an x-intercept, to use it to draw a graph, so that you can use the graph to find the x-intercepts, right? It's like you're kind of going around in a circle. So if we had a quick and easy way to draw the graph, uh, then this method might be better, and we will in the future get more and more ways to draw graphs. But for now, this method is, it's interesting that you know how to do it, but it's not that useful in principle. So we're going to apply this example to three parentheses x plus one equals six. We're going to solve by graphing. So the first thing we want to do is clear the parentheses. So here we're going to get 3x plus 3 equals 6. Then we need to get a 0 on the right hand side, so we're going to subtract 6 from both sides. We're just setting it up right now. So we have 3x, 3 minus 6 is negative 3, 3x equals 0. 
Okay, so we have an expression here, a function of x, okay, and it's equal to zero. So if we graph this guy, 3x minus 3, then we can see uh, what the zeros are, or what the x-intercepts are. So how do we graph 3x minus 3? Uh, well, you haven't learned slope-intercept form yet, so it's kind of weird that they're asking us to graph this. But th the way that they say you could do it is you could make a t-table, okay? So you could make an x, y, t-table. There's lots of better ways, but this is one way to do it. And start plugging numbers. If we plug in a 0 for x, put a 0 right here, you get out negative 3. Plug in a 1, 3 times 1 is 3, minus 3 is 0. Plug in a 2, 2 times 3 is 6, minus 3 is 3. Plug in a 3, we get out a 6. Plug in a 4, we get out a 9. If you notice, these are increasing each time by plus 3, plus 3, plus 3. And that's because this number right here, the 3 in the front. We'll talk a lot more about uh, slope coming up. So if we plot these points, 0, comma, negative 3, 1, comma, 0, 2, comma, 3, uh, 3, comma, 6, etc. And we draw in our line. We've got a nice, beautiful, well, that's pretty straight got a nice beautiful line here and the x-intercept which is right here yeah this is the point 1 comma 0 so x equals 1 is our solution also known as our 0 also known as our root also known as our x-intercept uh, but I would say that you could have solved this equation algebraically and got x equals 1 much more easily then rearranging it, making a t-table, graphing it, and then looking and seeing the answer. So be aware how these things are all related, but don't necessarily rely on this as a method to do the solving.